Hello and welcome to this special edition of the Model 3 Owners Club show. My name is Kenneth Bocor and I'm here with Trevor. He's just behind camera right now. And we're here in Toronto at the Electric Vehicle Discovery Center, sponsored and managed by Plug and Drive Canada. And I'm here with Emile Stevens. Welcome. Thank you and welcome to you. So Emil, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the purpose and the function of the uh, of the center. So Plug and Drive operates the Electric Vehicle Discovery Center as a place for learning about electric vehicles. So we have vehicles on display, we have interactive displays to learn about the technology, about charging infrastructure and what you might require at home for charging your electric vehicle. And also we have vehicles available for test drives. Well, we welcome them in and uh, we bring them over to our entryway here where we have a wall displaying some of our uh, major sponsors that have helped us to get to this stage, including people like the Ontario Power Generation, the Power Workers Union, uh, TD Bank, and of course the province have all helped us to get here. And the automakers, of course, lend us the vehicles to put them on display and also to offer test drives to people who come and want to experience the electric vehicles. So thank you to our sponsors. Next, we move over to our uh, wall of history of electric vehicles. It's over 100 years, and the first vehicles on the road were electric. Um, back in the early days, in fact, um, uh, electrics out, um, outnumbered uh, gasoline cars. That's right. So it's interesting to follow that history. Not horses yet, but gasoline <laughs> cars they did. <laughs> and then it goes right up to the modern history and what's, on the, what's available on the road today. Uh, of course, right in front of us we have the Mitsubishi iMeve, one of the earliest electric vehicles of the modern era. Um, it does a short range of just over 100 kilometers on a charge but it's also one of the least expensive vehicles available to buy as well. Especially with the Ontario incentives that are offered. Absolutely. It's a very attractive entry-level electric vehicle in this province to get into. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, now, do you find a lot of people are surprised at the history of the EV as far as how long uh, being one of the first vehicles that were invented before uh, combustion engines? Yeah, in fact, uh, it's, it's interesting to people to learn that uh, electric technology has been around so long. And uh, what's limited the, um, the uh, advent of electric vehicles up until now has been the ability to store enough electrical energy on board the vehicle. Um, but with uh, lithium-ion batteries that have greater energy density, uh, longer lifespans, and they're a lot lighter than lead, lead, lead batteries, as an example. Now we can have uh, vehicles with long range, great performance, and uh, that brings us to the modern era of electric vehicles. So right behind me, we have the uh, Mitsubishi iMeve one of the first electric vehicles that's available in the Canadian market and has been on the market for quite a while now. Um, now uh, Mitsubishi is actually uh, manufacturing additional vehicles including the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid that we expect to get here very soon. Um, but the iMeve is a basic electric vehicle, four seats and a range of about 120 kilometers per charge. It also has the ability to quick charge so you can plug it into a wall socket or plug it into a level two station for quicker charging. But if you're on a road trip, you want a really quick charge, that's the DC uh, fast charge. So on this side of the iMeve, we have the Chatamo connector for the DC fast charging. You'll notice the big lugs there for really fast charging. In about 30 minutes, you can go from zero to 80%. And over here, we have the AC charging port called the J1772, which is compatible with every vehicle available for North American sale. So you can charge level one, which is a wall socket, or level two, which are a lot of the public stations that are available around Ontario. All right, I'm here with Leah Gotkin of the Electric Vehicle Discovery Center. She's going to help us with this next station. Tell us what this is about, Leah. So um, as we follow our EV road to discovery here, we learn a little bit more about the different types of electric vehicles. So BEV, standing for battery electric vehicle, HEV, hybrid electric vehicle, and PHEV, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, uh, plug-in drive. Obviously, we promote the plug-ins, anything with a plug. And then there's also so cap and trade, so talking about specifically in Ontario where we get this energy and perhaps the reason for our incentives being so much higher than the other provinces is that our energy is very clean and at night we have a surplus of energy here in Ontario and we're actually losing a lot of money because we can't store all this energy we're producing. So we're losing money, giving it away to places like New York and if we all had these electric vehicles, we would be able to plug in our cars at night, harness this energy, fuel our vehicles, 
fuel using yep, uh, in quotations yep. um, and drive a lot cleaner. Well, we tell everybody that your home is your gas station, yeah. right? When you're filling up an electric vehicle. Yeah. So you make a great point that we have a surplus of energy. A lot of people are, are concerned about the, when the Model 3 does hit the markets mm. and finally get shipping and the, and the influx of other manufacturers, manufacturers, battery electric vehicles as well and plug-ins, that we may have an issue on the power grid system, but that's actually contrary, at least here in Ontario, where we do have an overage and we have lots of energy to spare, and it is clean energy, correct? It yeah. is. As and you right said, now, I mean, electric vehicles are only 1% of cars on the road. And so we need to get people on board before we start worrying about um, these grid problems because we do have the capacity to handle this, and it is the cleanest, best option to um, reduce your personal carbon footprint up to 90%, right. other than, let's say, not flying. But if you want to get to places like Australia, there's really only one way to do that, and that's in a plane. If you want to get to the supermarket, so sure, you have a this option. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, so we really tell people that this is the best thing that they can do and give them the full EV experience as we continue down this road, ending in a free test drive in a lot of different models of cars by uh, different manufacturers. Great. Well, let's move on to the next station. So we're here with Leah again, and we're looking at the different uh, charging stations you can install at home. So I'll let her tell you all about these. So these are all level two charging stations. This is the exact uh, type of station you would want to install in your driveway or garage, indoors, outdoors. There's a variety of different stations. These are all 240 volts capability. Um, they take about four to six hours to charge, which is perfect because hopefully you're getting at least that amount of sleep every night when your car is sitting in your driveway anyways. So um, they're perfect for installing at home and they have different capabilities such as Wi-Fi, different cord lengths depending on how far you might need to reach your vehicle. There's also portable charging stations and permanent charging stations. Our website also sells charging stations and soon we'll be able to sell them here just to facilitate the process of getting into an EV and making it as smooth as possible. I want to make a, uh, a quick note and let everybody know who's waiting for a Model 3 that you can use any one of these chargers on your Model 3. Tesla will supply you a J1772, that's what this kind of connector is. They supply an adapter that goes on the end of this so you can plug it into your car, just like a Model S or a Model X does. So you're not obligated to use anything that's by Tesla. You can use any one of these charging stations, or you can just use a simple NEMA 1450 connector put into your garage or outside because the car will come with a universal mobile connector, which is the adapter that you use to plug into either 110 or 220. I did a previous video on this when I did my Model S test drive, and you can see me using the adapters in the trunk and you can see what's supplied with the car. Thanks, Leah. Thank you. So when considering buying an EV, you will likely uh, come to a crossroads at which type of charger you need for your home. Uh, there's a variety of different chargers and this screen over here will really help you uh, decide which charging station would best suit your lifestyle. So we start choosing a charger. So uh, there's a variety of different charging stations and you're able to go through this screen and figure out which one would be best for your lifestyle. And then of course, examine the prices. Now we're also able to provide you by looking through this screen, the warranties and uh, the rebates you'd be able to get back for your charging station. Because along with up to the 14,000 that you get for purchasing your car, the government is also going to help you install the charging station and cover part of the cost of the charging station itself. So now we can click on public charging, which is generally uh, people who are prospective EV drivers' uh, biggest concern, whereas I can tell you from personal experience that you are really not using these charging stations. They are more to get you comfortable with the idea of driving electric, but 90% of your charging will likely be done just sitting in your driveway. For those long distance road trips that, you know, on the off occasion, 360 days of the year, you might be charging in your home, but there will be some times where you need these public charging station infrastructure uh, available to you. So there are a variety of different ways people go about public charging. First is through their vehicles because they all have GPS that allows you to find the nearest available charging station. So for example, on one of the very first EVs uh, in the past decade, we have the Nissan Leaf. Now as basic as a car may be, it has the most efficient uh, destination system where if you plug in your destination and you're not able to reach that with the battery range that you have, factoring in the weather and if you're running your air conditioning, it will calculate whether 
whether you can make your destination, and if not, will we will reroute you to the nearest available charging station uh, within your path. So um, it's very easy to get into an EV. It's very easy on your phone to download these apps such as Plug Share or Charge My Car and find the available charging stations near you. Okay, I'm back again. I'm here with Dav. She's going to explain what this room is all about. Well, this room is Power Place at the Electric Vehicle Discovery Centre, thanks to the generous support of Ontario Power Generation, one of our premier sponsors of the new Electric Vehicle Discovery Centre, the first of its kind in the world. And what can we do, uh, what do you do in this? Uh, so uh, Power Place yeah. is a multifunctional facility. Uh, it's a meeting place, it's a conference facility, it's a training room. Uh, we also ha can host uh, evening receptions, gatherings, AKA anywhere. meetups potential. <laughs> anywhere. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, yeah. Anywhere from 25 to 100 people we can accommodate nice. different configurations. Uh, whatever your needs are, we're here to help you. Now, I also understand that you use this room for some other practical methods like dealer education. Can you explain how that works? Yeah, so um, as you may have heard, uh, we have great partnerships with uh, the auto sector, of course, and uh, we're work working with them to better educate dealers uh, in the province and hopefully possibly expand beyond that. What we're finding is um, EVs, as you know, are really new technology and they are actually a small percentage of overall sales in, in the province. Right now they're uh, just under 1% of total sales. One of our goals is to increase it to 5% market share by 2020. So one of the key ways we can do that, of course, is to increase awareness about the center and draw consumers here, but also educate dealers at, this, at their dealerships. Yeah, which so is that very important. A lot of them really yeah. don't, they don't know anything about electric vehicles and they're not possibly motivated to sell, so it's nice to get educated. Right. Well, I think, as I said, because they're a new technology, a lot of the dealerships may not even have the cars on the lot as yet. So it is um, a tougher sell. So we give, you know, the salespeople a lot of credit for our, um, what they can do. But of course, we're here to educate them as well, so that they have that depth of knowledge uh, that they can relate to their consumers. Excellent uh, use of this space for that. Thank you. Well, we just want to say a big thanks uh, for the crew here at the Electric Vehicle Discovery Center by Plug and Drive. Thank you very much for hosting us. It was a great knowledge experience, and you guys are fantastic. Trev, any final words for our guys? I'm uh, just going to say that if anybody is in the Toronto or the GTA area, even if you're a visitor or you're a resident uh, and you're curious about EVs, this is the best place to come and learn about them in a no-pressure environment. You can check out several different vehicles that they have here, learn about the history of EVs, see about chargers, come out and check it out. It's a really great facility, so I want to say thanks to everybody for helping us out today. And uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. So don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Model 3 Owners. And Ken's handle is at Kenneth Bacor. Yep. Don't forget to check out our forum at Model3OwnersClub.com. And we'd appreciate it if you take a look at our Patreon page at Patreon.com forward slash Model 3 Owners. And that keeps us uh, going with this channel. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's really important. That way you get notifications anytime there's a new video coming out. And Anyways, swag wear. Yeah, and don't forget our t-shirts. I mean, ten Ken's wearing one of his yep, today. proudly. Yeah, check it out on our on our uh, on our store. So, anyways, that's it for today's episode. Thanks for uh, joining us, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Absolutely. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you.